Hi, this is Magician Chuck Caputo. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Usually I'm demonstrating some antique magic props. Today is no exception, but I'm going to talk about the genius of Inverti. I think this, this needs to be uh, done because he was way ahead of his time. I wrote everything down here and I got a few things on display. Tony Inverti was born Antonius de Vries in Holland and he was born August the 20th, 1925 and he passed away January 31st, 1995. He was a baker. He started off as a baker, then he became a clown, and he did a lot of his original effects. He did a lot of uh, electronic magic as well as liquid. A lot of people don't realize he did liquid magic as well. I have a few pictures here. Here's Anne Birdie. I was fortunate enough to get this picture a while back. Okay. And here he is as a European clown. It is somewhat different than what we're used to seeing here in this country. Okay, and here's one of his catalogs. This is pretty old. It's in great shape, actually. Throughout the years, he sold a lot of things through mail order, and that's how he made a lot of his money. And he appeared in the Genie magazine many years ago on the cover. So there's a, there's a nice write-up of him. All right, and 1992, he came out with uh, his book, which I happen to have right here, 50 Years of Magic Creation. Uh, it's, it's a really cool book. You can find it on used uh, magic list nowadays. It's fairly expensive. When I bought this, it was only $50. I think it goes up to maybe $200, $250, somewhere around there. And here's his lecture notes. And Verdi did a lot of things. He was very creative. He did a lot of things with handkerchiefs, balls, silks, things of that nature. Here's his two lecture notes. These came out in 1964, I think. All right. And throughout the years, people ask me, why did I get into collecting Inverti? Well, I just don't collect Inverti, but I perform Inverti. In 1988, I would say, I was uh, very fortunate to do a, a show here in Pittsburgh with Del Rey. And Del Rey became a good friend of mine. He was fantastic, way ahead of his time. And uh, so we kept in touch throughout the years, mainly on the, on the phone. And I also heard about Inverti, so I started to look into what he had, and he came up with a lot of neat stuff. I love black plexiglass. Most of his props, as you can see, are black plexiglass, blue plexiglass, all different colors of plexiglass. All right? Some of the most favorite effects of mine happen to be the Inverti Talking Skull. This was the first Inverti prop I ever got. 1990, I'd say. And I hooked the uh, transmitter up to a tow switch. So when he operates, it's hands-free. It's really cool. And there's a bunch of things. His spirit bell is nice. This is his dial of mental effect. Here's the spooky coin box where a coin gets put on here. When a spectator tries to grab it, it falls down. It falls through. They can't grab it. Here's the barking dog, the hand box, the surprise box. And over here are some of his liquid magic. Now, this is not my full collection. I have most of it packed away. This is a really good one. This is called this uh, ring glass. You stack the rings up and mine appears out of nowhere. This is the long neck bottle. These are just, these are, oops. <laughs> these are just different types of bottles and trays and so forth. Okay, and, uh, but that's how I got into Inverti. I've been doing magic now professionally for 35 years, just under 30, and that's a trick in itself. <laughs> so, I, so I still use a lot of his effects, particularly the Inverti Talking Skull. Now, back in the early 60s, there was a rumor that somewhere in the magic community that an electronic die was going to come out. There was speculation, and Inverti was the one that built that. And I'll show you what it is. It's basically a black plexiglass die. And what the idea is, whatever number is facing up, the spectator closes the lid. You can't see into it. And yet, the magician can discern what number is facing up. Here's how it works. He started off with a die. This is probably one of his first effects. If you look, there's little LEDs that light up. Right now, it's on number five. Okay. If uh, excuse me, number four. All right. Now we're going to take this out. We'll put it on number one. Watch the LED. It'll light number one. Okay. So whatever one you put on, put inside the uppermost number, will correspond to the matching LED. Six is off. So you put it on six, nothing happens. Okay, so if, if there's no reading, it's a six, or somebody might be playing games with you, <laughs> and they might actually not put the die in the box. But this is the early 60s, and this was 
something that came about and nobody could believe it. Let me show you the inside of this receiver. It's all hand wound coils. I mean, it's unbelievable that this thing even still works. But he was way ahead of his time. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a fascinating piece of magic. The other thing I wanted to show you, his last effect, I believe, or one of his last, was another die effect. It's called the floating die. This is one of my favorite effects as well. All you do is you gesture toward it. Go up, please. Up, yes. Stop. Back down. All the way down. Up, up. Stop right there. Go up a little further. And what's cool about the inverted die is you can actually take it out. And this can be examined and passed to the audience. So I hope you liked our little tour of the inverting magic. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to contact me. You could locate me on the internet or wherever. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I think I can finally relax. What do you say? Let me have a seat on this stool here if I can. Let's see. Let's, uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think I have to go to the hospital. All right. <laughs> we'll see you. Have a good day.